Hello and welcome back to Bump Love. And because here at Bump Love we celebrate every single milestone, we would just like to appreciate you, our Bump Lovers, as we journey through to our 50k subscriber. So if you are new here, you want to be part of the OGs of Bump Love, yeah? An original Bump Lover. Just hit subscribe, hit subscribe, and become one of the first 50k. Yeah. You never know, we might have something for you. You subscribe as the 51k person. There's no, no gifts, no awards, <laughs> yeah? And also, the people, the partners that have joined us in this journey would just like to take a few minutes and appreciate them. Fashion episode for our fabulous look, our shoes by Shoe Puzzle. We have a fabulous makeup by Shades of Beauty and the lovely hair at the back by Zuri. Yeah, we love our partners. You've been here with us for us together with the Bump Lovers. We love you so much. But before we get into that meat of our episode, guys, let's just tell you about our week. <laughs> Every time you come to the comment section, there's something you're talking about. Yeah. Yet we also have lives that we are right, living. Right. Yeah. yeah. But before we get into the meat of this conversation, ladies, mm -hmm. how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I'm not fine. Yeah. What a now? Dear. You went, you guys, did you see the post she did? Yes. Oh, her parents. Mm -hmm. Oh, their anniversary. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. So, so cool, and I was informed reliably that your mom asked for us. Mm -hmm. Where were our invites? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get lost. Because, friend, let me tell you, she posted, she even sent us with her people are dancing. Her okay, parents are looking That's for us. We are going nowhere. You we are not nowhere. invited. <laughs> Tell us how. No, but, but you guys, first of all, Okumanya, that you've become part of my real community. <laughs> my bestest of friends, but Nachiganda, were not there. But my mother didn't even ask about Nachiganda. <laughs> she said, she said, never nage pumla. But Manuela anga I was like, madam, you know Nachiganda is not here. Hey, you are <laughs> but yes, my parents celebrated their 40 years um anniversary in marriage That's and lovely. it was an amazing mm -hmm. event it was amazing 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 but you see in my family you guys you've heard the way i speak about my family yeah. as we are really strict when it comes to numbers my parents want to fund their own things yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. so they gave us particular numbers of people that we must so in my mind as like vanangi i know I'm, i love my bump love crew i mm. love them so much and i wish One they were there to celebrate <laughs> in it with me but guess what my parents are going to have a 45th anniversary and you'll be the first come on ah, ah, you you the first. <laughs> so i don't know just now 40. Five, oh, five, five, 40. you people if you get a man like pumla throw out <laughs> 45 who's waiting 45 <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder we are going to go and shoot in Bulova. Hey, yeah, yeah, we know. Yeah, we, we should. They really love you and they want you there all the time. So oh, you're always top so of my parents. Nice. Send them our love. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's not yeah. something easy. But, yeah, I know 40 years is a whole deal. Yeah. But guess who was part, she, I think she, she was part of a, a journal. She submitted an essay in a journal. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> you guys, first of all, I feel so fancy and intellectual. Yeah. I didn't write for a magazine. Yeah. I wrote for a journal. Wow. Yeah. You know those fancy uh, pieces of literature that you find like in um, like like in a doctor's room. office? Yeah. Or like these really cool fancy coffee tables. Yeah. yeah. So I wrote an essay in a Come journal. On. Wow. The journal is called the We Uganda Review. Ah. I got a call, I think, a couple of months back from a gentleman called Rodney, and I'm always shying away from writing engagements because I mm -hmm. I'm I'm a bit insecure in that area. I'm great at talking, but when it comes to writing, I overthink it. Mm. Yeah. So when he asked me to write, I was like, me? Why? First of all, I'm on the show with Pumla. I mean, you could have started with Pumla. Obaya Pumla is also going to write for the same 
same <laughs> journal. Yeah. yeah. It's not my time, dear. <laughs> not your, okay, okay. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, I was really insecure about writing, but I felt that the challenge came at the right time. Wow. Yeah, so I was happy to take it on, scared but excited. Mm -hmm. And Rodney was really great because wow. at the end of the day, he does all the editing and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And mm -hmm. you guys just seeing my work in Puri. Yeah. Nice. Hey. Available at 20k. Sorry, I'd slide it down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really well written. I've read it. It's on matrimonial introspection. Yes, matrimonial yes. introspection. Matrimonial introspection. Yeah, it's really and nice and well written. Thank yeah. you. Well structured. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Thank all those you. English words are there, but simple. Very it's not simple. Easy to yes. read. Easy yeah. to read. Yeah. And that's Amazing. what I really appreciated about it. He kept encouraging me and telling me just write simply. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. Here we are. Well done. Yeah, well yeah. done. But that's not all, people. <laughs> Other people be shining on these streets. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, Newman's is growing constantly when? and evolving. Yeah. Yes. And every time I see something online about Newman's, I just I'm like, oh, oh yeah. look at our girl. Yeah. So some some special people paid a visit to the Newman's uh, establishment. Yes, yes the new yeah. factory. Yes. Tell us the about new factory. That. So um, the story is we started small, like we started in a mm. store and then moved yeah. to uh, a bigger house. But now we moved to a land of our own in Nakauka. Yes. Okay. So my closest friends had not been there. Of course, I was always telling them about it, you guys, yeah. new man. So, eh, we have machines coming in. This thing is expanding. So having them come to see what we had done, I was amazed. Like I was looking forward to them coming. And they came and they bought us a plant. Yeah. Oh, oh my yes. god. Yes. Manuela, Sarah, Rachel, Majo. Oh my god, you guys. So Thank nice. you for coming through. Yeah. But you guys just said given you a Bible. Let me allow me. Me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, me. me. You guys. I'm I'm so you. Yes. <laughs> small, small. You guys, the new man's factory Sorry. is a state of the oh. art. It is a huge factory. Yeah. You know those things where you go and you're like, where are the crisps? Now you you will drown in those crisps. Because yeah. the Easy. machinery, you know, like I looked at my friend and I remembered when all of your good council guys are senior secondary school day and body night oh and watching. <laughs> Oh my God, from yeah, yeah, yeah. say yeah. Kawempe to Amen. a huge factory. We got tired walking at one point. Let me say it. We had to use a car. We were exhausted and were tired, but we had prayed and fasted for such a long time yes, for had. this to come. Every machine were praying for it. Era, you are yes. a people who released the things where we were praying. We were praying for you. You would have to release those machines. So for us, it was oh. such a huge oh, yeah. testament for That's us amazing. to go. I know, right? And just see what some you of know, us haven't been there physically. I can't wait for you to come. For, for, for me, I'm a visual Bump person. Yeah. You're definitely so there is nothing that Pumla is speaking. I mean, Manuela is speaking about that I couldn't see in the stories. Ah. I, I saw these five girls because I've been in, engaged with them. Uh -huh. All of them bring their car something. There's a prayerful one. There's, there's this one. There's yes. this one. And they were all together in like a boardroom of sort. They were wearing, you know, those things that you see in, in their movies. <laughs> Yeah. Like when your girlfriends come, and now none of your girlfriends are ugly or broke. <laughs> wow. Jenny, I looked, you know, I, I love, uh, I love re, uh, watching amazing. your stories. So but yeah, I, I it can't really wait is. for you guys it really to is. come. It you really will is. definitely it come. Really is. It really but is. about you, Angie. Uh -huh. Oh my God, our deco guru, guys. That deco you see on the street, pink coconuts. Yeah. You posted and you kept, you know, giving us snippets. Yeah. I, oh I, my work, gosh, yeah. I work with, I work with an amazing person in the background. Yeah. Tell us, yeah, tell us. Um, pink coconut at the moment is in a bit of a heighter, so it's Kemi that I'm really pushing. Mm. And with Kemi, I'm pushing creativity. Because mm. the truth is that there are lots of decorators right now in yeah. the city, yeah. which is perfectly fine. But to be able to rise from the mass, yeah. I thought that it would be best to build on the Kemi brand. Oh, yes. But when I do work, um, I'm sure you guys also do it with your parents. I, I go to my parents a lot, just either for banter or just wisdom. Mm -hmm. So my dad is the creative. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we yes, sit together and we discuss. And it just reminds you that unlike any other profession <coughs> or skill, 
creativity is something you can go with all the way to your grave. Yes. Yes. It has no age. He walks in and it's like, you know what? That's not aligned. If we added a bit of texture and you're thinking, wow. how would wow. daddy know that? Wow. So, oh, yeah, 86. Nice. So, Imagine. Yeah, he often comes to my workplace, but it That's feels so really sweet. good when he comes to like project, project. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not, ju not so, visiting. Yeah, yeah that was really good. But of course, as part <laughs> of my, my journey to get here, there's like mm. a guy called APPG. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used, to, I used to be the resident, the resident, uh, what do you call it, frequent flyer. Mm. But these days, mm. <laughs> I guess it comes from planning. But do tell us. Mm -hmm. No, you guys, let me tell you, to be honest, Angie is like one of like my best success stories. Yes. And the good thing is we've yeah. all seen we've it all happen. Seen yes. That's for sure. We know that Angie yeah. before, before APPG. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And the Angie yeah. after APPG yeah. we are given a dress S with a belt. <laughs> with a belt. Super S student. For those of you who don't know what APPG is, yeah. APPG is the annual personal planning getaway yeah. where we come together, plan our entire year, three months ahead of time. Yeah. And we've already had one session for returning attendees you still have time actually for you to sign up right now for the next weekend or the weekend after you can i know check out all of my you know come to my social socials and you'll find all the details you'll need yeah. for you to be able to yeah. be a part of APPG. and we'll, we'll be, i'll be there yes you will <laughs> yes you will be there. <laughs> at the front of the <laughs> class <laughs> oh, wow. i'll be there yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. You asked for now, the week now. Yeah, I asked wow. you how you were, but <laughs> I thought you were just going to tell me we are okay. Thank yeah. <laughs> you. I thought you were going to say we are fine. Thank you. How, how are you? <laughs> then I also say I'm fine. With bump club, has then that we ever enter the conversation. The conversation. Oh, no. But alas, alas. alas. <laughs> wow. Here we are. But I'm sure. I'm sure the bump lovers are going to appreciate this part yeah. because it allows them to get a feel yeah. of who we, we are, are as outside people outside, outside of, of bump love. Yeah. But yeah. now, reset. Can we come back? And today we would like to speak about the dynamics of intermarriages. So intermarriages ideally is marriages between people of different ethnicities, religions and social groups. We had an episode where we discussed uh, dating and marriage with, amongst different social groups. So this time, for the context of this conversation, we want to speak about marriage uh, between people across um, tribes, races, borders, countries, yeah. and probably religions as Ooh. well. Ooh. Yeah? yeah? So just for the start, it, it's really apparent that there has been a surge, an uprise, in the number of intermarriages, yes? Mm. In our societies today. Why do we think that is? Um, I think because the world has slowly turned into a global market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It means that our borders have become more porous. People yeah. are bleeding into yeah. countries, into cultures, into religion. And what does that do? It demystifies the whole culture. Because mm -hmm. if you don't understand yes. the culture, it feels so far oh, off. Well, but yes. now that we are spreading out, we are able to understand other people's cultures. So they don't look too crazy or so different from our own. Yeah. From demystification then comes tolerance. Yeah. You're able to tolerate yeah. other people yeah. and from tolerance comes understanding and from understanding we start making love. Yes. <laughs> I, love it. I think for me, yeah, I would go with that. I would oh, go okay. with that. So I think with our parents' generation, they were more concerned about preserving culture mm -hmm. and, and so things like marry within your your tribal your culture was very prevalent i think even where religion was concerned yes. yeah so if you were say a protestant or an anglican or a born again christian yes. it was almost unheard of for you to say i'm going to marry say a muslim yes um because there was just that thing where it's like i don't know what's over the other side yeah. it just seems so foreign yes. so strange and I would want us to preserve the things that I have taught you, the norms that I have taught you um, as your parent. So I would advise that you marry within what you know, the context yeah. that you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think more and more we are becoming more open. It's like 
we are all here. For example, people have migrated from, you know, Gulu, yeah. from Barara, from wherever, and we've all congregated here in Kampala. So we go to school with Muslims. Yeah. We go to school with Catholics, yeah. you know, and so they become like, hey, she's a normal person. Yeah. Just they believe their own things. And then, but when it comes to eating, we all eat the same food. True, we, yeah. we dress the same way, you we know. Yeah. Same. And so as you go through life, as you, you finish school, get to university and you're thinking about who to marry, somehow your mind and your conscience has been, see, it is not the word. Um, has become more adaptable yeah. to being around other people. They don't seem so so, so far, far away. away. Yeah. yeah, I think for me yeah. it's information. Mm. We have more information now. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, my mom. My mom is Amhima. Um, my dad is Analur. Mm -hmm. And in my like my mom's side, they like they'll say things like, "Wazahi ni wazakuri." Like. <laughs> Like, where have you gone? They'll eat you. Yeah. Never cook. Yeah. Uh, like, they're, they're, what do I, what do I say? I don't want to say cannibals. They're like animals, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. um, and then they, you come into a place where you have information and you realize, no, it's not, it's not accurate. That's not accurate information. Like, we have access now to more accurate information yes. that now we are able to relate differently. Yes. And, and also when you realize that, okay, let's say that in my dad's tribe they eat people, so in the other tribe there are people who eat people. Yeah. So you realize, wait, the, the vices I see the other side also sometimes can apply to my side. So, so all of a sudden we are, okay, yeah. we are kind of like on the same page. I have a friend who's, who's, who's literally a pastor. And one of the things she says is, you people, if, if you hear that I'm no longer born again, I'll be a Muslim. Oh, okay. Yeah. So why? Because now she has more information about what the belief system of the Muslims, the belief system and the practices of the Muslims are. And so when we ask her why, she says, they're the, they're, they're, they're the religion that's closest to the Jews. Like, they're the way they live. So I would most likely feel comfortable. Or she would say, if Jesus never, uh, if I was never saved, I would have been, you know, because now we have more information and also because of this information we've become more open-minded yeah. to you know to take in some some to take in some to be, okay. to be okay actually yeah that's the word so for me that's what i would say has has changed over the years i also yeah. think that dot com era has mm. really made it very open for us like even across borders like you know you would hear what's with the italians but here it is with you on tv you see them on a daily social media you know you can just google whatever it is i mean if you found a man and he's from across borders it's easy for you you don't have to go and ask your grandfather who will what stop you <laughs> because of what they knew in the past yeah so uh, the dot com era, I think, has really even you know t taken it oh, a notch yeah. further. I think, yeah. I, I, for me, I think mine has always been like Angie said that we are now living in a borderless world, yeah. and yeah. borderless not so much physical borders, but I. Right here in Uganda and Kampala, mm. I'm speaking to people in Kenya exactly. and Tanzania and South yeah. Africa. Mm. I'm telling people about my culture, yeah. you know? Yeah. So they'll yeah. learn from me. I don't have to get onto a plane yeah. to, to yeah. go anyway. I don't have to go to any immigration to sign any documents for people to learn what, what? happens in the Uganda culture, yeah, you know? That's so I think so it's true. that whole globalization. And what that does is that it allows people to see that, okay, we share the exact same experiences. So true. We love the same, we heart the, the same. So when a baby is born, we all feel the same way. Very true. When somebody dies, we all feel yeah, the, same the same way. And that allows us to see each other beyond the As differences well. yeah. and more now about the same. Now we are human beings yeah. because that's all we are. Yeah. We are human beings. Yeah. Now there's no need to look and stare at someone. Yeah. Actually, now we look, if you don't know the and you're just ignorant, yeah. exactly. you know, yeah. because the That's world that you've just refused, you don't want. Yeah, exactly. But you're, yeah, but if you if you allow like the whole borderless world, it, it's it's it um it's more inclusive. Mm. It allows your mind, and what that does is because now I can oh now I see the the Ethiopian, I can marry the Ethiopian, or I can marry the German, mm. by just me doing that. I'm allowing somebody else to do the same. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And when that person is allowed to do the same, they say, oh, that's okay. Mm. Pumla did it. Mm. You allow somebody else to do the same. Yeah. So now it becomes normal. normal. Yeah. yeah. So that, that would be. Yeah.
My so how about, how about growing up, guys? Like, what was your experience with this intercultural, or, yeah, these marriages, intermarriages. Actually, it's intermarriage, <laughs> whether yes. it's race or culture or yeah. tribe or, you know, religion. It's all intermarriage. So what was your experience growing up with intermarriages? Maybe something you noticed or even in your home? <laughs> I, I think this is something that I had to learn later in life and this is something that has firmly made me believe that you can adapt to anything. You don't have to have been exposed to it or to have seen it from when you were young. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have any experience with intermarriage growing yeah. up. Mm -hmm. If anything, it is always said that my son is the first um, seed yeah. of an intermarriage in, wow. your, in, your, in my in line, your whole both lineage. on my mom's and my dad's side. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we are all Waganda, and that's <laughs> all I know. Yeah. But my son, but when our union love. was the first union. Yeah. And for me, I didn't have someone no one had to give me permission yeah. you yeah. know to do it yeah. it's just that it was so honestly growing up no zero experience nothing yeah. so i'll leave you guys just, to, yeah i mean to I, share. I will go next because i also didn't have much experience with uh, intermarriages both my parents are from the west they were both born again christians still are so that is all I knew yeah. growing mm. up. And even when I got married, you married my <laughs> husband is from the West. He's also a born again Christian. So I don't really have much experience. I actually just thought right now, I have an uncle who married uh, a Muganda. Mm -hmm. But even then, I guess because she's the woman, she sort of got um, uh, more to his immersed side. Yeah, yeah. in the Western culture. So I don't, <coughs> I don't really have much experience to speak about. But mm. I do remember my dad feeling some type of way about a particular tribe okay. and he used to make random comments and he's like oh people from that side this was like way way before like before i even like was thinking about yeah. marriage but he always had like a thing about i'm not going to mention the tribe no 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 <laughs> yeah. um, we might guess it but yeah and so i remember um there was a guy from that place that was kind of interested in me. And so there were other reasons that I said no, but that Kathim was there. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm going to, so I take him to my dad, and then, and then he's going to say he. And that is going to be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I kind of feel like, I don't know if that influenced me, but if I had gotten, um, if I was asked, um, if somebody from another tribe had asked for my hand in marriage, I have a feeling I would have struggled a yeah. bit in terms of like telling my dad because Especially that part of, of Uganda. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You've mm. said it. I know, no, no, no. no, no. Ah, Bambi, no. I don't know. Bambi, no. Actually, it is not your bishop. Now, you've, yeah. now it's elimination method. Now it is not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you will not guess. And I, I will no, tell we are you not going to guess. Yeah. 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 So okay. I feel like. I feel like, yes, because I kept hearing my dad. And he didn't even make the comment many times. It must have been maybe like twice or thrice. But yeah, but I, now I, I had it in me. I was like, oh, maybe it's just easier to marry from your culture. Yeah. Because then you don't have to get to know other things. Yeah. And, yeah, it's such a weird way of thinking. But I can see how it can be. It can yeah. influence, you know. Yeah. And the truth is, a lot of our parents, to yeah. be honest, well, like have, there's a tribe yes. that they had there's rather their child. They yes. know yes. it. Yeah, yeah. Not, not just, not just, not just, not just parents. Parents. Okay, yeah. Even just those who, not just like even those who are in, inter, uh, are in those relations. Yeah. Ships are exactly like that. My dad comes from a, a, a mixed tribe. My mom comes from a mixed tribe. But also then they have tribes they that don't. they don't. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true. They, yeah. they had rather yeah, not. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that's understandable. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Both my parents were Baganda. Mm. My dad's side, my mom's side, it's just my mom. I think her father was, I think there was a Western something there, but Baganda. However, my mom was Muslim, you know, getting married to a Catholic. And my father, I, I, I think that love took over, really. Love won, yeah. love wins. Love conquers When it comes to this, love won. Like, I see this girl, I love her, I don't care. Yeah. I just want her. Religion aside, this is the girl I want. So she was Muslim, but of course she had to. So I, I, I grew up 
seeing both practices. Mm. This church, but then of course my maternal One side, who are Muslim, they would veil, yeah. they would come and uh, salam alaikum. So I knew, I grew up knowing a bit of both. Mm. Like Pumla said, you adapt to mm. all cultures. As a child, you can adapt to anything. But what fascinated me uh, was, uh, an auntie of mine was married to uh, a guy from Kenya and for me I was very fascinated mm -hmm. about the language. I love the Swahili, yeah. like just mm -hmm. learning. Your mom tells you, Takupiga wewe. Yeah. Then you also <laughs> go and tell other people. Yeah. <laughs> language. Eh, onataka chakula. Like, I, I was just fascinated that I know an extra language. Yeah. I learnt it. And also the fact that, oh my God, these guys are from a different country. You feel like they've made it in life. Yeah, so for you, you're here, Uganda. Yeah. And then there's this, you know, you know, uh, uncle who comes in from Kenya and is bringing all sorts of unique things. But yeah, that's what I knew growing up. I knew Islam. I knew Catholic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I was exposed, exposed to, to pretty to much everything. Yeah. Yeah, so our home was called the United Nations. <laughs> Surely. Yeah, wow. because obviously one, it was a big home. My, my home was, <laughs> anyway, my mom was, like I've shared, was Amhima, Dai was an allure. And I, I remember many times, while they were okay with, like my dad would be okay with me getting married to, any other tribe, there was that one. Oh, okay. And that one is the one all his girls got married to. <laughs> <laughs> the one. They said, but, but, are you, when you <laughs> want Uganda, oh, this Uganda, yeah. don't you feel sorry for your children's noses? Oh, my <laughs> Lord. It was the noses. Hey, the noses. Wow. <laughs> That's the first oh, one, God. usually. <laughs> Aren't you worried? <laughs> first daughter. There. Mm. Second. There. Mm. They, it's like, man, what's up with you, Paul? Manuela, you're the, you're the last one. Eh, yeah, I also that. Pulled that one. <laughs> so it is an, uh, it's now it was United Nations. Now I tell it really added in United Nations in our, but I remember feeling that I've always grown up. I feel that I don't see color. I don't see race personally. I don't know whether it is a thing that happens to people. It, even when, I, I, I'm, I'm blind to all of them. I don't see tribe. I move. Mm -hmm. Maybe I see mana, no mana. I was there, <laughs> there. I was there. I see my eyes are open. Oh, yeah. But everything else, I kind of feel like even if I, I was raised in a place where they'll say, yeah, yeah, just because you are from the West. Hey, just because yeah. you are from the north, just mm. you don't look like you're from the west, from the, from north. the north. I get that a lot. Oh, you're too pretty for that. Keep oh, wow. quiet. Never, ever, ever, ever say that backhanded comment. It's horrible and it's not a compliment. Anyway, yeah. I digress. That said, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That said, <laughs> that said, I feel like I've had a lot of. My life has been filled with a lot of intermarriage, yes. but my me. Manuela, me, the, mm. the inside of me, does not see those boundaries personally, yeah. Um, when people say they don't see color or whatever, a lot of people are like, how's that yeah, possible? possible? But it's the truth is, you don't until somebody highlights yes. it. Yes. You know, like you're at school, you, I have friends who we were friends for very many years and I didn't know what tribe they were. Yeah. Because I just assumed yeah. that everybody's every tribe. Yeah. Growing up in the home yeah. that I did. If we speak about experiences as a child, one thing that used to amaze me when I now look back at my childhood was language. Yeah. In our home, language was an emotion indicator. If you want to know what mood mommy is in, the language Just will tell you. for the language. Oh, wow! And the language comes, we'll get to that point when I'll talk about like the different variations in language. But it was an emotion indicator. It, it, it made us very fluid. Mm. When you're here, you speak with these ones. When you're here, you speak with them. When you're here, you speak with... So people ask me, how many languages do you know? And I'm like, I'm not sure. Because yeah. if I listen long enough, Yes. I kind of remember because the first languages that I ever spoke were German and Maasai. Wow. Okay. Yes, those were the first languages Here I understood. Canes were always unleashed in Kiswahili. Yeah. 
Njo. You understand me? Yeah. When you hear mommy saying Njo, you know there's, there's no oh. about passing, about where or where. But in the process, language was also yeah. the thing that made us acceptable in so many communities. Oh, yeah. 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 So that when we'd go sense. to Tanzania, we would fit. When we come to Uganda, even with our broken Luganda, somehow we would fit. So yeah, for us, languages, I, I, at least I feel it's one of those experiences that I've carried on to my adulthood. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but now it that featured you're quite a lot. yourselves, ladies, um, how are you, you know, what are your experiences or those around you dealing with these intercultural, intermarriages in general? Um, in terms of experiences, I've noticed, or even with myself, because I'm not married to a man from any of the tribes that run through mm. my, my body, I realized that the second you practice gratitude, it fixes so many things. With gratitude comes humility, comes understanding, mm -hmm. comes acceptance. The reason why people experience, whether good or bad, in uh, rela these intermarital relationships is the fact that for you, you feel that this is how we make matoke, mm, then yeah. this is this, <laughs> this is that. So you spend so much time trying to make someone think like you or criticize them, yet you could use that amount of energy yeah. to either learn what they do and then blend them. Whatever bad manners they have. When you mix two things together, yeah. They, yeah. They, pro they produce... So, I, in my case, I'm, I'm, the experience I've seen being in that kind of marriage is that the second you practice gratitude, it fixes so many things. And you learn so much because when you appreciate, then you're trying to understand the other person, then you're picking up the language. I used to try to speak my husband's language, but... Oh, how's that going? <laughs> Many years later. No, man. They don't want to teach you, but I know all the love. Okay. The love words. The love ah, okay. Yes. And you can't talk about me without me. Uh, kind, uh, of. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So for me, experience as an adult, gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. And I think in line with that, just having an open mind. I mean, I didn't experience it. Although now, I'm like, oh, I'm more open to like other tribes and um, other ethnicities. Mm. Maybe not religion. Yeah, I will be open about that. I'm not open to other religions. I would still go for a born again Christian because yeah. that's what I know. And I think faith for me is very core. Yeah. But there, even when we are choosing partners, there's always negotiables and non negotiables. Yeah. So for me, faith and religion are, are non negotiable. But in terms of like tribe, um, um, yeah, in terms of tribe and race, I think just having an open mind to, you know, like what you guys were saying that. We all we are the same. We are all human beings. True. Yeah. We I mean, we eat. We might eat different things or different foods from where we come from, but ultimately, you can learn to adapt to someone else. And I think being curious, choosing the path of curiosity, over being, I, 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 I yeah, I'm not moving from here is um, is a better approach than for me. This is all I know. Or, it's the right way to, yeah. And I dare say, even in a, a marriage where it's, you're not really from different races, you already have to be open-minded about yeah. your differences. Yeah. So how much more, exactly. you know, when you're from, from different cultures? Yeah. I think my thought is um, when God created, he didn't create a Muslim, a Catholic, a oh, Protestant. Yeah. He when he created, man. he didn't create... Um, he created man all under his image mm -hmm. and as far as I know like we'll have a culture yes he's given you that but in case maybe you are thrown away or the kids that they pick on the dustbin what's your identity I believe God should be your identity yeah because he's your creator so even with religion, I don't care. I have a beautiful mom who came from a Muslim side. Mm. Very beautiful culture. I love that religion so much mm. because it has all details of life. And there's something they say, God is one, like we are one. Mm. And someone was telling me the other time about Islam, that why they unite so much. Mm. Many people fear that, 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 that 
the religion Islam because even when you go to culture, mm. the prayer is the same. You're not going to find someone preaching something different. True. So prayers is united. You True. go to China, it's the same. True. You go to everywhere. So, so for them, true. that unity goes beyond the unity of even the born again. So this one will preach this, the other one will confuse this, this one will say it yeah. grass, this one you get so they will bring confusion. Yeah, it is eat your grass. Let me shower you with soda to make away the sin. For you to watch blessings come. I want to bathe you myself. So there's I, I love it because there's that one unity. Yeah. And I, I I've not had a problem. Like for me when it comes to religion, I believe that God sees the heart. He won't see your religion. No, Even won't. when you go to heaven, they won't say you the Catholic. Mm -mm. Come. So he will true. see the heart. You yeah. the the heaven will surprise many. Those who are rigid, hey, for me, I'm Catholic. That's the for highest you. five I will ever give in my life. <laughs> hey, that's what the highest it? five I'll ever give high in my life. High five, sister. High five, five sister. sister. I wish I could reach you. So uh, I believe that God sees the heart. Yeah. This is this Desmond Tutu. He hated this whole wahala of hate. He always preached peace. And it came from that. Why should we divide ourselves against religion, against Love it. culture? Love we it. are one. Mm. Love we it. are one tribe. We are one people. Love Guys, it. we are one. Mm. Yeah, that's it for Interesting. me. Interesting. So um, me, I'm not limited. Yeah. You, you're <laughs> there. Yeah. For the world. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like a small boy. I love you. God's descendant. I don't discriminate. I yeah. love that. That's interesting. You, remind, that. you know, you remind me of that meme, and I think we've talked about it uh, before. Mm -hmm. The one of, I don't want to marry from another tribe because I don't well, want to explain religion. why I have to kneel down to greet <laughs> you. Yeah. I, don't want to, I don't want to, I have to marry from the same religion because I don't want to explain how I speak a language I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and that meme, like when we it's talked so about funny. it, I was like, I remember that meme so much because I could see where it came from yeah. in terms of the fact that, you know, it's better the place you know or better the person you know because then there are certain things. Marriage on its own, for example, is hard. Yeah. Then you add the differences yeah. that you have to yeah. navigate through in terms of religion, in terms of when it's your friend or a loved one there, it's, it's kind of like you, you see them here and there, but now you wake up 6 a.m. Ah, let me, let me kunyimizai you this one. Yeah, husband and wife, one of you is a devout Muslim, one of you is a devout Christian. Mm. Now the devout Christian ha, has not cooked, we are fasting. Now you, the Muslim you are eating, today you are eating. Mm. <laughs> then you reach time for sleeping, your wife is the one shouting. At one she has just slept like this. You hear the, the, the imam the calling you. Yeah. <laughs> now you are the one who has to get up. The whole house is not sleeping because you know there is a difference. And that things can honestly bring strife within yeah. like the union of, of marriage if you don't know yeah. how to how navigate to navigate them. it because already marriage has its own, 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 its own issues. issues. Yeah. So for me, in this time, what ha what, where I have come, to, the place that I have come to, is that for me the most important thing right now is your value system. Mm. It's your value system. For me, I think for me it is, wh that is the highest level of intermarriage, when you have different value systems. Because the truth is, tomorrow someone can decide, while I am a Muganda, I'm not going to be a practicing like. Muganda. Actually, I thought you said something like you're that. You're reminding me of my identify <laughs> as. <laughs> That's the world we are going into where people are identifying <laughs> as something else. The only thing that will remain core mm -hmm. is that value system. And so for me now, those days I would look at many other facets, but now it's the value system. And if yeah. anybody asks me, that is what I would say. And the truth is, Religion gives you different value systems. That's true, uh, culture, culture gives, gives you different value systems. systems. Everything gives you value. So just look for the person who has it. Mm -hmm. And you might find a person with a different religion who has your same values. As in, it's, it's, yeah. we're going to enter a world where everything is all over the place. Yeah. We need just that anchor. And for me, I believe in where I've come now, that anchor is the value system. Yeah. As long as we have the same value system, yeah. let's move forward. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I think from, we, talked, we talked about sharing experiences. I think the closest extreme that I have um, around me is um, my sister who's married to a German. So she's in an interracial mm -hmm. marriage. 
and also kind of inter-religious because he's non-religious and she's practicing Christian. Ooh. Yeah, but again, Felix, my sister's husband, non-religious, atheist. I just want, don't want to say atheist here because I'm not sure if it's something public, but he has the biggest, Best kindest, heart. sweetest heart I know in the world. The world. Even kinder than the ones who preach it themselves in their religions. Ooh. I hear you. His heart is big. It's good. You know, big, big, big has nothing to do with anything, actually. Yeah. It's a goodness. Good heart. He has yeah. a good and pure heart. His mind is clean. Yeah. He just wants That's the best for everybody. Yeah. The best for everybody. I remember when they were coming home once, my parents really worried about them because uh, Germans generally are mostly known as yeah. racists. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Generally speaking. Mm -hmm. But you see, somebody who grew up in a certain kind of community but has chosen to yeah. do better, yeah. to be better. Mm. And for him, he literally does not see anything but the heart. Oh, yeah. yes. Nothing else. Yeah. Because those religions and cultures you're tying yourselves to have bad people. That's bad true. people. They have devils, actually, in those bodies. <laughs> we see them. We see them. We work with them. We interact with them. So I feel like I've always felt like if you... Binge, and it's fine, by the way, like, like Manuela said, it's value system. And value system has, is biased by yeah, our towards, upbringings yeah, towards yeah, mostly yeah, culture, yeah, yeah. mostly <laughs> religion. Yes, I'm not to say that they are not great people. They are great people everywhere. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you put them in boxes and say, me, I can't be with that person because of A, B, C, D, E, you will find yourself choosing someone exactly like you. And, and you'll problems. find problems, oh, yes. problems, yeah. problems. I remember one of the things that um, I saw in my sister's house, Hannah's husband, is a fluidity of, of gender roles. Yeah. I remember my sister sat at a dinner table and told my father, I will never marry an African man. She was 10 years old. Wow because of the representation that she had seen in African homes, mm. where women are slaving in the she kitchen. Like she it. said, I'm, I, don't, not, I don't like this life. Mm. I don't, and yet she had never seen it. different. Exactly. You yeah. see, yeah. It's, you know, people like to say that, oh, these Western cultures are the ones spoiling us. No, sometimes you don't have to be exposed to anything to make decisions yes. that are different no. from the societal norms. Mm. My sister used to really say, I don't like doing that. Mm. I don't want to do that work. But so why, I, is, why is the burden on me can alone? Can I say just quick, quick, yeah. TV was exposing her. No, we didn't used to watch TV. We only had those mm. cartoons of dactyls. Because no, my parents okay. never used to let us watch TV. Okay. Yeah, we never used to watch TV <laughs> when we were younger. We used to watch Kisifa. And actually, the, the, the cartoons we had at that time were, were, patriar were patriarchal. They used to mimic exactly. If you've ever watched Flintstones, yeah, it's yeah, the patriarchy. Yeah. Yeah. All the cartoons we watched at that time were so patriarchal. Mm. They were so misogynistic. So you couldn't say she was exposed to anything. Mm. She wasn't. She we all were not. She just decided, I'm not going to be the one that you're sending all the time. You guys are there in good time. As we have to be in the kitchen. Let's, why can't we do these things together? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the thing that I have seen in their homes, the thing I have seen in their homes is that exact fluidity. <laughs> I remember when Felix used to come home, before they were married, they used to stay at my home. Mm -hmm. We never used to do anything. His th thought process was, the physically stronger person yeah. should be doing more work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Why is it that women in this country doing this work? He never used to understand why it's women who hold babies. That thing he never understood. Why is it women holding children? Yeah, Yet yes, men are physically stronger. stronger to he hold didn't, the baby. Teja, I, when Felix was around, I never used to hold Teja. He was always oh, the wow. one with him, playing with him. He would find you in the... He would wake up earlier because they were my guests. He would always ask me, okay, we are your guests and the African culture has taught you to look after Yoba Gengi. But you know us, we are going to stay here the whole day. Yeah. You, you have to go to work. Yeah. But you're waking up earlier to cook for us. Mm. When he realized that my African culture was stuck in me and I was still doing the same thing, he started waking up an hour earlier than, than me. you. Yeah. Because me, I had refused to, mm. to leave the Let kitchen. So he would look, I would find him in the kitchen. But find things cooking. Cooking, I'd find him cooking. He doesn't want to do it at that time. Yeah. He says we can sleep and as we can do it later, you go to work, you'll find food re there, ready. I'm like, what flu? What? What world is this that, mm. that, I, that I have, I'm missing? <laughs> that I've <have> missed? <laughs> right? You know? <laughs> so for me, it was just that openness and the yeah, culture nice. difference and the fluidity with, in which they 
they, they, decide, they did their roles, they managed their roles yeah. in the house. Me, I felt that was great. That's something sweet. out of this yeah. world, yeah. Um, ladies, do you think that there are advantages that have come out or come from intermarriages today? Yes, there yeah. are. Yeah, I think, um, and I think it's, we probably started from, you know, what we were saying on why they have increased. I think just being more, more open about other people. Inclusivity, I think that's the word I'm, look, I'm looking for. You know, for people not to feel like, you know, this is all I know, this is, this, this is, this is the culture I know. I just being more aware and having more information and being more educated about other people's cultures, mm -hmm. I think is, I think is a good thing for you to know that the Bagisu do things this way or the Baganda do things this way. It's strange, like you know, you were share, sharing earlier about you know the Buko, yeah. your ma the mother, the mother-in-law yes. not being in the same room. So for me, I find it interesting. I'm like, I don't understand why, but it's just nice to know. Yeah. that that's the way they do their thing and that maybe when you're in a situation like that like i always dread going for introduction ceremonies where it's like the the girl is a muganda because i know now we're always going to kneel and then get up and then kneel, <laughs> and then we, can kneel. we can kneel <laughs> we can kneel to greet the sengas then you are greeting the, the the young girls i tell you have to kneel you know and then you have to stand up and go in your gomeses and bring the gifts oh, and, and those them there in the oh, and then carry you know? them well if you don't carry yeah. them well that's yes. side eye. yeah and i think so just knowing and then knowing how to behave when you're in those situations that's when it is called for mm -hmm. i think shows respect to the people who you're visiting or living with at the time and mm -hmm. not being arrogant that oh because they do things a certain Different. way and me that's not how i am Therefore, um, there's that saying about, you know, when you're in Rome, doing as the, the, the Romans do. Yeah. 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 Can I answer you briefly it. about the Buko thing that you were asking about, why mm -hmm. the mother shouldn't be closed? Mm -hmm. So before they put it as a norm, mm -hmm. um, you know, you would find a young mom, mm -hmm. our Angie's, mm -hmm. our mom, and then a Moko comes, and instead of getting attracted to the daughter, the daughter. he's now eyeing the mom. Oh, that's yes. what the Moko yeah, was. Yes. Yes. Because moms were versa. having children at 15 yeah. years. Yes. So you're 30, so your daughter is 15. Imagine. And the Kaboy has come, is 20. Imagine. And you can imagine it's happening right yeah. now. And so. you know what Intermar did for our family? Mm. It swept out that Moko tradition. Really? Mm. Yeah. Because my mother started to ask, why are we really practicing this Boko? Thing, yeah. Let's talk and let's sit and talk about it. Mm. And when we sat down and talk about it and dissected it, the real issue of Boko is that the age gap between the, f the man who came to marry your daughter yeah. and mm. yourself, the mom, was very, very small. small. Yes. Yes. So you are now a fully formed, nicely looking, 30-year-old uh -huh. woman. Yeah. You've now sprouted. Your boobs yes. are out. You're, you're there. So you are not allowed to walk around to be seen to yes. Yes. because yes. you might ignite yes. some yes. electricity. Yes. yes. So my mother asked, so is it really possible that me, your husband can land fall in yes, love with, with me, me. No. is How? it possible no, no. Yeah. so my mother said until you bring someone who is closer to me in age, age. Yes. that yes. book that book or tradition yes. i We're have powered it yeah. completely like, it work, and for yeah. her it's not applicable anymore yeah. 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 because mm. that you look at that man do you, is there really felix is he going to now come and yes, run away <laughs> with me <laughs> And let me tell you so much so that even now, my uh, brother in law, they, when they're around, yeah. they stay sometimes in a hotel, but yeah. towards the end of their visit, they'll go and spend a week at my parents' home. Mm. Because we were made to think about our culture yeah. and its relevance yeah. in our society exactly. today. today. And today, that for me is one of the biggest advantages of. Um, Intermarriage. Intermarriage. At a macro level, it fosters world peace. Yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. Because Absolutely. what this Buko tradition is doing is creating a boundary between two people. Yeah. It's saying that you cannot come here and I cannot go there. Yeah. How can you be peaceful if you can't be together? Yeah. How can I learn tolerance? How can we be inclusive if we are not allowed to celebrate things together? When we are taking pictures, if you see our earlier pictures, yeah. the Bako would be on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> My mother, you know, there would be like a real thing of, of where are they, where are they standing? <laughs> My mother then would stand and here and in the it. picture. Yeah, yeah. Then the Bako My, yeah. would stand on the other side. What yeah. is that? Mm. But here, now, 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 what is that? I I like the fact that you say that she sat down and studied uh, yes. and analyzed. Oh, yes. Because analyzed. the truth is, all these things that um, 
when you enter a space and you find certain rules and regulations, yeah. before we, we, we tweak them up or change them, mm. how about Ask. we understand, understand why, why. Yes. which she did from. and she yeah. practiced until she got to that point where she's like, we are not cheap. Mm. <laughs> you know, we are not cheap. Or nice yeah. Molds. yeah, because yeah. like for my mom, she doesn't have bokon. That said, of course, your family will force the book on you. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. But my grandpa was dying, and my mom could, could make him better. Mm. So she said, what nonsense mm. is this? I know. She drove to Uganda, got him from wherever he was, showered him, got him ready, brought him back. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, she's going to die. She's going to get a she's disease or something. Yeah. Well, wow. my mom is 83. She's there chilling at home. Yeah. <laughs> no problems at all. But um, still on the advantages of, mm, of you yeah. know, intermarriages. I love, I love diversity. I love food mm. experience. Oh my God, yes. Food. Yes. Diverse For me, I really yes. love that. Like I come to Germany and then I'm yes. tasting all these cuisines yes. that are not yes. my ordinary. Yes. Matoke, nyiga, nyiga, toke. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love food. My brother and will enter the kitchen and we are done with a meal in 30 minutes. We are yeah. like, yeah. 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 Mama, you enter us. Our Home. From We've woken seven up six to in. <laughs> you put them at all, okay, it is now there. <laughs> just we are here at 3 p.m. People right. come and chat. Yeah, oh we, have, we can't still serve. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is great. Not to Which say that great. it's, it's not no, it's our culture. But then yeah. you should have the options. If today we want to do a 30 minutes, maybe we do mm. it. If tomorrow we want to do our talk, we do it. We have a matoka masule, musa masue. We have the short and long form. In my case, in terms of advantages of uh, intercultural yeah. or tribal I would go with access to resources oh yeah language is a resource I keep going back to language, language. it's a thing that we can easily yeah. dissect yeah. language is a resource the fact that you are like for example me getting a placement like my sister getting a placement in Tanzania was easy because of that car I did uh, added you know addition so I think in terms of resources we are, uh, when you intermarry children are able to be multilingual they're yeah. able to uh, the fluidity of being able to move within yeah. you know different right. people and then once again acceptance yeah. you know when 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 you're a, a person who accepts people in any society people tend to gravitate towards yeah. you so you know in terms of of, of of social interaction I think it's fantastic, it's fantastic. That, that we're having yeah. more of those intercultural I, yeah inter yeah I feel that, you know, like kind of like extending from what you've said, there's a certain love. Like I'd never understood the verse in the Bible that says, you know, love your neighbor. I mean, like, that's like, as you, love as, you know, love your Like when we were giving that two last commandments, like, okay, the <laughs> time, I've, I have condensed them to these two. <laughs> to love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's very hard to love someone when there's boundaries exactly. and stories mm -hmm. and restrictions that have been given to you. And so I feel that one of the things that intermarriage has done is it has allowed the love to happen. Mm -hmm. Like now it's very hard for you to say, I mean, just the other day I was at a wedding, a family wedding, where we're now going to have two women, two, okay, so from my father's side, my cousin, and from my mother's side, my cousin got married into one family mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we uh, okay. yeah from my mother's side one cousin father's side one cousin yeah. and they are both married okay. into okay. one family mm -hmm. now if you're having fights on your mother's side mm -hmm. and your father's side mm -hmm. now there is a marriage uh -huh. yes. <laughs> now there is a marriage right. now we all came to the wedding mm -hmm. Both sides. Both sides. Uh -huh. hey, we are all there. No hiding. No hiding. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, when we've come both sides of we are sitting on the same on the side. Same side yes. Because before we would be seated on opposite mm -hmm. side. Yeah. But now we all had to be on the same yeah. side, <laughs> representing the same side. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it was yeah. quite it was quite interesting to see. And of course there's so many jokes. Meanwhile, it was another Muganda family. <laughs> <laughs> and we kept saying to them, now which, who will we call Mrs. Mugoya? Since you're yeah, both, now yeah, Mrs. Mugoya. Mugoya. And yeah. also the, the relationships that we were so far off now have to come nearby. Because you, you're related. How? Understand. To who related to who? So a certain sense Aww. of togetherness and love comes, comes with just those intermarriages mm. happening. Secondly, I also think that you get the best out of life. Because 
both cultures have their negative sides and yeah, their positive their sides. Positive. And most times people like the positive yeah, sides. So, so you're probably going to lift up the yes, positive side. So yes, we're going to live in harmonious, harmonious living. living. Yeah. In just happiness. Yes, <laughs> double yeah. positive. Yeah, that's I, I, I like that you mentioned that because I remember my dad always says, that people can talk about Gandhis, but they are going nowhere. And would be like, why, Dad? He says, one thing about Baganda is they marry other tribes. Mm. Yeah. You see, like Muslims, they are, more they are open. willing. They are more open. Muslims yeah. are willing to accommodate, come and become part of us. So even with the Baganda. Yeah. So my brother was married to a Taiwanese. You know, we are all all over the Taiwanese. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Wow. But he's like, when I'm seated here, yeah. Amnyaranda cannot come and kill me. Yeah, we, you'll hear. You get because yeah. those those are our people. Yeah. I'm higher or I'm Chaga cannot come from Tanzania to slaughter me because these are our people. Yes. And it also cannot come and because my grandchildren yeah. are. So it says you can talk all you talk about yes. Gandhis with their big noses. Yeah. But we go marry you people and <laughs> producing you children. Reduce the nose. The nose yeah. It is so cute. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. One of big nose marries one of seasons. <laughs> it's a small one. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. hopefully. Yeah. hopefully. So nice. Okay, nice. let's let's quickly talk about challenges oh, because yeah. I, yeah, like you mentioned, we are mostly discussing the positives. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about challenges mm -hmm. that are likely to be faced in intermar inter yeah intermarriages or interracial marriages. I think Pumla, your sister's scenario in my opinion, seems like an exception. There are not many people who are enjoying that kind of, oh, yeah. of mm. union um, where, you know, culture, is, uh, culture and race is not really a thing. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I guess let's speak to those people who are in those kinds of marriages and what challenges they could possibly we face. We all speak as a child from an, um, mm -hmm. an inter thing. And to you guys also go... Eh. Yeah. I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, just informing you. Ah. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, my, my, so, Ethan, you might say that my sister is uh, an exception mm. but uh, one of one of the things i have seen mostly that the privilege that they have is that we speak his language mm. english, english. He's, we, we can communicate yeah. he speaks german yeah. he speaks german yeah. but, but he, he speaks he speaks english, english. yeah there's a uniting factor yeah. so because human beings are built for connection and one of the the most effective way to amplify connection mm. is through communication. Yeah. So the communication needs to be shared. You must understand each, each other, other for you to get along. Mm. There must be a way, even if it's not spoken, mm. you know? So I felt that maybe a challenge that would um, manifest in these kinds of unions would be not so much between the two of you, because now for you, you're in love. Mm -hmm. But now imagine you bring your German boyfriend who only speaks English to a home where your parents are maybe not educated oh. or don't speak the language Whichever that language he, you that you two can speak together. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, English that we are speaking on the show. So if he came home and then maybe my parents were from the village and only spoke our native language, mm. I would feel that there would always be a disconnect mm. between, you want your parents, you want th this now to be a family, mm. right? But now there is that car dividing mm. factor of non-communication mm. where you can't really understand each other and what get you want to. Mm. I would feel like that might be a barrier, yeah. a challenge. A yeah. challenge of sorts. Also, yeah. I think if your immediate family is not tolerant. <laughs> if they are not on board. Yes. I, and I think if yeah, if all you have going is your that's love wow. and your immediate family that's is not tolerant so of your union, I think you can spend the rest of your lives trying to Fighting. validate your love, yeah. Yeah. Um, which just makes it feel like, why is this so hard? hard. Why that's do we have so to true. work twice as hard, hard to explain our love that's you know, so to the true. people who are supposed to be cheering you yeah. on? Yeah. yeah, I think that can be a, a bit yeah. of a challenge. A challenge. A challenge. Yeah. I have a friend who got married to a Mugisu man. And, you know, the, the man was, you know, very interested in this whole Embalu thing. Oh like, my, my God. son has to go through this culture oh thing. My God. And she's like, hell no, we're doing that circumcision in hospital. He's like, you're not doing that. Oh my so God. you need to be very open to, you know, I'm that ready. compromise. I'm ready oh because God. at the end of the day, you've entered that culture. You know what they're about. Mm, yeah. So you need to be open-minded to, you know, hop in yeah. there and... and <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> but how can you... Anyway, let me not go there. But <laughs> one of the reasons, like in the Bible, that, for example, God, you know, would tell the Israelites 
marry within each other was for preservation, for purposes of preservation. And so when I, I feel like one of the challenges or maybe, maybe disadvantages is a certain dissolution, like there's watering some like, watering, watering down, down yeah. you know, there's some car watering down because the truth is, you see there, you know, you might think that you can't fall in love with your, your older mother. Eh? Mm. The Boko thing. Mm. But Munanga, you can be there having a fight with your wife. And you're like, but this old woman, really? she's so graceful. Manuela, so those things are happening. So hey. hey. It sounds perfect, it but it's actually happening. That example sounds perfect. perfect. Hey. But, but the truth <laughs> is, this old it's old 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 all women these days, they are not they so old, old anymore. So you can be there and Buko was going to have saved you that, alas. that exactly. Alas. And now it has been watered down, you know. So I feel like, and I feel that you, you find that now, I mean, children don't know their culture. They don't know their yeah. religion. They can't stand. They have no... They have no anchor uh -huh. because everything, you know, like we, I shared earlier, value system comes from these things. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And so if they have been dissolved, so has the value system. Mm. And so now you have a society without, with changing values as they feel. Yeah. Mm. And then Can we are, I we're enter taking briefly? It, uh, please enter. That is why they are identifying. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the major reasons <laughs> why they want to identify, identify us. us. Yeah. Mm. So I feel that in certain ways, mm. the fact that we, I, I wish we could get to a place where we can intermarry, but be able to keep. You know, I kind of want I to have our cake possible. and eat it too. I don't know if it is. I think it is. Um, but like, what are the chances that we can? Or, I mean, I've seen like what the Chinese have done. They've built such a strong guys. culture. Kudos. That the Chinese, the Japanese, they've built such a strong yes. culture. You that can't the world break it. Now enter. Mm. Do you click? Eh? Now, now one of the global languages is Chinese. Like yeah. how did but you, you get here? Yeah. Yeah. You get it. Like they made Mandarin. it so strong. Yeah. But buttressed, buttressed it. Those of English buttressed it, gave it a strong foundation. Now it's immovable. You just have to, you have to acknowledge you have to acknowledge it as something that is global. So I, I think for me that's yeah the biggest I totally disadvantage agree with I that see. Until if you notice that mm. the, the, the the cultures or race you're speaking about have somehow managed to keep themselves enclosed, the second love enters in the thing. <laughs> yeah. If you've been to Guangzhou le recently, mm? lately, there's there no China. Of, but total, uh, Even here. Thing is, the ones are eight people around the factories. The and the yeah. roads. Hoima. Yeah. Uh, what is in Hoima? And what has taken you a hundred years? Love can dissolve Immediately. in one couple of Oh, yeah, that's years actually like true. Before. You know, that's so actually that's very also true. something to speak yeah. about. Um, I'm going to love. But I, I hope I, I, I bring it out right because I'm speaking for a certain sect of, of people out there who have found themselves in positions like mine. Mm. When you are raised in an intercultural, intertribal marriage, you tend to speak many languages. Mm -hmm. Not because you want, it's because, as I said, yeah. for us, Exposure. language was an emotion. Mm. My mom, if she called me and told me, I'll be like, Mom, are you, are you high? Mm. Because that's not the language that I receive love yeah. in. Yeah. When I make love, or when I'm singing to my children lullabies, I sing in Swahili, mm -hmm. not, not Luganda, okay. and not English either. Yeah, English we can, but mostly I make love in Swahili, I sing to my children in Swahili, because those are the lullabies I know. Mm -hmm. So if, someone, if you were to ask someone who knows me, they'll tell you that Kemi speaks Swahili in three or four different ways. I speak Swahili like a Congolese, I speak Swahili like a Kenyan, I speak Swahili like a Ugandan, I speak Swahili like a Tanzanian. Yeah. Now flip that to English. Then people start calling you an imposter. You've mm. heard that. Yeah. But how does Angie yeah, change yeah, her yeah, accent? Yeah, My yeah. question is, you're a Ugandan. Yeah. Do you know that in one sentence you can speak Ugandan English? Yes. yes. And you don't even notice when you're doing it. Yeah. It is the same for us. Yeah. So it has nothing with either leveling up because most of the people who, who coined that imposter thing are Americans. They oh, speak yeah. 
American. Can. <laughs> but any person who comes or who has lived, I've studied in three different countries, East African countries. Yeah. Our, I don't know whether it's all of us, because we are eight of us, and four of us are great with languages, four of us aren't. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. But when I listen, when me, I'm seated with people, it doesn't take me long to start speaking like someone else. Oh, yeah. And it's not because I do not know who I am. Who I am is yes, that yes. fluid. So, uh -huh. yeah. so when you people like, oh, but you know, you're always changing. I said, but you just spoke in Luganda and English at the same time. Did you notice? Yeah. So same thing for us. So I know that there are a lot of people out there, even because I had friends from Asia, and they had the same problem. People would be like, oh, you know, she always constantly changing because that is what we have known from the time we yeah. were young, that, you know, you pick up this, you pick up that, which works perfectly, especially for the kind of job that I do. It makes me more fluid. But when it comes to language, when you see people shifting, it's not because they are trying to level up or level down. Boss, I can speak Swahili in five different ways mm. in the same conversation. Yeah. And I won't notice, because if I'm speaking with mom, I speak different. When I'm speaking with dad, I speak different. If I'm speaking with credo of uh, Zuri, I speak different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean that I want credo to like me more than somebody else. Yeah. But it, it comes as a challenge for people like us. Same thing, for example, people can call me Amnyankole, and Amugisu, Amuteso, Alangi, Kila yeah, Akitu. Because Nigeria. my <laughs> features are equally yeah. fluid. Confusing. Yeah, so a confusing, fluid. So that, so that is a challenge to you as to a child person. born to the yes. intermarriage. Not a challenge anymore because now that I'm older, if okay. you tell me that, I'll be like, yeah, problems of people who speak one language only. Yes. Yeah, because I was about to ask, um, have you? Are you done? Because I haven't had the challenge. What's the challenge? Yeah, the challenge before Kubel. Yeah, even like I mean, okay. you've had someone's like, does Angie speak like that? Yes, this is how I speak. Yeah. Yeah, and the way I speak with, with my children is the way I speak. I speak okay. all these things and all these things okay. are okay. who I am. Okay. Now yeah, yeah. it's not a challenge for me, but I'm thinking got for you. a young child got somewhere. You. Got you. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. What advice would you give uh, young lovers that want to enter into these unions, intermarriages? Uh, what would you advise them to do? Interestingly, these days they don't even ask for advice. I think because it's becoming so <laughs> no more you know, for, for intermarriages to happen. But I think I would say count the cost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because in, in, in okay, I'm going to say normal marriage, but that's not what I mean. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> a typical marriage where, mm. say, we are both from, let's say just we are both from the East. Mm. Yeah? And maybe we are maybe both Catholics or maybe I'm Protestant and Anglican. That's still a bit soft on the marriage fabric. But your new, neurotypical marriage already has challenges because of the differences that yeah. already exist. You're a, a woman, he's a yeah. man. You know, yeah. you both think differently and all of that. So count the cost in terms of maybe will his family be accepting of the cultural values that I want to instill in my children or even the religious values. You know, if you're from different religions, yeah. are you okay with the fluidity of yeah. religion? Yeah. If that's okay for you, then go ahead and marry. If it's something that you feel is close to your heart and maybe you want your kids to follow a particular line mm. then you have a decision to make so i i really would say count the cost and look about look at it in different angles mm. in terms of how you want to raise children what kind of traditions you want to have at home what memories you want to create what's the end product of the child or human being that you envision or even just your union as a couple, yeah. because that's really where contention comes from. Yeah. Um, there are people who say, I'm going to marry, maybe say from different religion, and the man is saying, we have to go to, to church, and maybe I'm a Catholic, and me, I'm saying, I, I don't want to go yeah. to church. Maybe you're not as open-minded as Rosette, yeah. but you're saying, I love this man. Yeah. And then he's insisting, because he's the head of the house, we have to go for mass. Yeah. And then you're like, but we love each other. Why don't you allow me to go to my own yeah. Yeah, and, and I feel like marriage some works best in proximity when you're sort of all following a particular path. Or maybe you're both open to, if he says you can go to your church and also me, I go to my church, maybe that's what yeah. works for you as a couple. Uh, but I would say count the cost. Count the cost. Yeah, yeah count, count the, the cost. I would say don't sweat the small stuff. Mm. And this is even more in, in intermarriages. Yeah. Mm. I'll just give you an example. My, my culture has a, a tradition mm. 
mm. of a chogero. Hey. A chogero, if you really go to a Chiganda household where they practice the real, real a chogero, uh -huh. and you've never seen it in your life, uh -huh. you, you can, can be run. sure yes. that they are cursing your children. Yes, they are <laughs> for our international so a chogero is, uh, in my culture, we have that, um, the grandmother of the children, this is the mother of the mother. mother. Mm. Yeah, your on the mother side. Grandmother. Your maternal grandmother mm. goes out and picks herbs. Yeah, you go out and pick herbs. There are specific herbs that the Baganda acknowledge are for goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, oh, okay. there are particular herbs for peace, for love, for wisdom, for strength, for confidence, for esteem, for so many different things. They go pick the herbs and bring them back home. Leave them in a basin, actually. Leave them in a basin overnight. The next day, so when you see the water, it's like black, green. murky, green water. Mm. There. The child comes. Please know that this has to be done within the first month. Two weeks, actually. Of birth. Of birth. Yeah. Now, remember what the doctors are telling you. Oh, the child, don't bathe the child in this thing. <laughs> don't immerse them in that. This is a baby that is so small like this. They have to put you in a basin there and, and remember the doctors told you keep the baby covered yeah. baby has to be naked yeah and they are pouring all these things that leaves are there like it is such a sight i have it engraved in my son's father's head when he was looking at that yes. being done to my son but me i had seen it it was done to me i have the pictures they were there and i have to take pictures and show him that yeah. this is what it is this is what we are going to do don't get too shocked and what ideally that ceremony is about is to breathe positivity in the child's life. Yeah. It's just that the Baganda had almost African traditions. There are certain herbs which are good herbs and herbs which are bad herbs. Yeah. So they believe in the power of positivity. Yeah. So you go and speak goodness into the child. The bigger part of that ceremony, the ritual, the is the speaking. Yeah. It's not so much the herbs. They just bring the herbs these days mostly as, as, as ceremony, can mm. I say. But it's more speaking. It's the way you take a child to church yeah. and speak goodness and into the them. child and mm. dedicate them to go and speak goodness into them. So for me, the small stuff is that there are certain things within our cultures, in the, in the culture of the other person you've married, hey. that is so personal to them. Yeah. And they would like to continue those traditions. Don't be. sweat it. Yeah. Unless they are night dancers, <laughs> unless they eat other people, yeah. unless they are witches, of course have your non-negotiables. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, always have your non-negotiables. But when your partner comes and explains to you and says, as we do this, think about it before you say no. Just think about it. Don't sweat it. Let it go. Be educated. Be guided. You'll be amazed. Yeah. It, actually, that practice, people who have seen me do it outside Uganda, mm. because I share, always post on social media, when all our children, my sister came with her children from Germany, and she even if one it. was bigger, they did it, the mm. function. And now people are always asking me, can your mom help us pick herbs mm. <laughs> to do it? They've never seen it. They've not done it. And my yeah. mother tells me, Ask, tell, you show me any of my children who is not successful. Mm. Show her to me. Show me that the child. Mm. Mm. Wow. Throw her in her mind. The 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 educated <laughs> mind. In her educated mind. It is the children. Yeah, not the children. That's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. that's so wow. don't sweat the small don't sweat. Yeah. Sometimes when we have um, when these topics come out, I have discussions once again with my parents. So I, I spoke to dad. Yeah. And he's the one who just, every single time, he just kept saying one thing. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. Gratitude. Mm. Gratitude. He can be there and he's like, there are things your mom used to do. My mom was the queen spitter in her village. Mm. What does what? that mean? Spitter. Really? And in Buganda, how does a woman do that? A woman? In, Even men and don't do I it. I have told you in my mom's pride, okay, they would say the one who can okay. spit the farthest. Okay. Because we've said we open our minds. Now for him, instead of open your mind, okay. he would be like, mm, but okay. I'm grateful my kids don't have very big nose. Hey. Oh, yeah, she's like, count, count your blessings. Thank you. I get you. Everything. She can, well, mommy, has, how will think things like for them, they squat when they are cooking. Oksitam, mm. right? All the things that Pumla, you are open, open, open your mind. Pumla, open your mind. Come, 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 open. Yeah. Show them. Show them how to open yeah. their mind. How do we open. do it? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
so my mom, her, her, her mother, her <laughs> grandmother, <laughs> Are, are seen there, yeah? like when my mom had come back, that they are cooking, cooking yeah, they are literally squatting, yeah? like you squatting the, yeah. I'm alive. <laughs> so we were like, man, not that with his boosting things. So be like, when I, get, I would look at these women, they are squatting and I would be like, Jesus. Then he would remember, my but dad, you're adding more. No, 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 the positive, the gratitude. No, the, the gratitude. <laughs> my my mind has is, closed now. <laughs> my dad is five five feet. Well, five five. Um, my my brothers are six one. Then he once oh. again says, "It's okay. The children are tall." Yeah, okay. So if you keep gratitude. telling yourself that. I'm grateful. You see the po mm. main thing with this marriage, with anything. Yeah. The second you see the positive side of things, mm. that's amazing. You can do anything. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Intercultural or intermarriages, mm -hmm. because you're going to get married to someone from, let's say, the north who wants to eat their posho, and here you are saying, yeah. I didn't grow up. Queno. Queno. All those. What is Queno? Malakwan. Malakwan. My dear. <laughs> A way to a man's heart is through his, his stomach. So you're going to love, learn how to cook that cook food that for your food. man. You're going to be learn how be be teachable. Teachable. You need be to be teachable. teachable. People teachable. out there are willing to actually teach you. This is how we do it. But here you are saying, ah, me, I'm used to my rice and the noodles. But after you, <laughs> after you try to be teachable, <laughs> hmm. also do research. Me, uh -huh. my brother was married to a Taiwanese. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just do research. Yeah. The research is Kati key. research is doing what for us? I'm saying for, no, for we are giving advice uh -huh. to the young yeah. guys. What does the research do? Do your research. Yeah, to there are some things to the culture. Yeah, there are some things where yeah. you're super sure. This one I can't let my child be based in a basin of leaves. Okay. But had you done your research, okay. you would have known that the woman you're marrying okay. even has a culture. Yeah. 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 Actually, my advice comes like from there. Be open minded enough to craft your non-negotiables. Mm. Oh, yeah, First, awesome. open up your mind. Find out. Research. Experience. Mm. You guys have seen like Zunia's coming to like a village and living in the village, mm. like mm. real being, so that they can real experience. And then after they're like, yeah, dear, here. No, Absolutely no. not. Uh, you are like, instead of bathing my baby that lives in the cold, let me go and speak the things when they are warm in a, <laughs> yeah. in a pink blanket and yeah. uh, and, uh, and you know yeah. like yeah. come like open your mind yeah. up to experience to see to find out so that you can come up with your non-negotiables because like i shared earlier value system comes from those areas and if you've not opened up your mind to experience and then decide what your non-negotiables are if you go by my mom's non-negotiables, my dad's non-negotiables, mm. then you'll get shocked. Mm. You'll find that people in the north, mm. we don't eat people. Yeah. We don't. We yeah. like malakwa. Wow. We like kwa. Yeah, we don't eat we people. We don't eat people. You, you are not nice. You are not sweet. First of the north, we don't want your meat. Okay? <laughs> we are good with our color. We are fine. <laughs> now they have told you we eat people. Now you don't look at us well. You understand? <laughs> yeah, so you come and eat our food, then you realize we don't eat people. And then you can go back and say, oh, come, how are we eat? You know? yeah. So come to a place where you can open up your mind yeah. and then decide on your non-negotiable. Yeah. yeah, and stand by them. I like what Rachel said. She stands by her. Like she has experienced. Mm, she yeah. has gone through gone in in, in religion. No, She's no, like, no, try no, it. No. Okay, this one is But this now one, religion. One, now yo 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 yo. yo. I am not going not to sharing. mix that one, not you know, sharing. and you can stand <laughs> in a pan and say, I'm kawa with it. Yeah, yeah. that's me, and yeah. I'm fine with it. And yeah. you can be fine even when the whole world is, is saying, don't be. You're like, dear. Mm -hmm. I know for myself, because yeah. I opened up my mind, I allowed myself to experience this other religion, to experience and... Yep. I, came I ain't to going there. Yeah. Going this there. is my non-negotiable. Yeah. That true. would be my advice to you. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You know where the non-negotiable can become problematic? Mm. Is in death. Mm. You know there are some things you don't know and then when people die, then you have to go to the village, then they tell you you have to throw your panty inside the grave. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's why you have to do your, that's why you have that's to do your research. Mm. That's that's why, so that you don't go with a panty. But the they ask you for your panty, you say, dear. I and I've been at a barrier where we couldn't bury. 
yeah. for three hours their barrier was at a standstill. No, yeah. no oh, because yeah. you didn't understand what it was that why yeah. am I throwing no, my no, panty yeah. inside? Yeah. 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 Do what? Yeah. But guess what? And do you know what it was about? Yeah. It was about that that it's man that has but it's it's like a seal yeah. that your man needs to still be satisfied even in death. Oh, is that That's what, what it was. That if I you don't put like your panty he, there, uh, he's going to come and look for you. In yeah, life. that he can yeah, come do you. And if come you and put look your for panty, you. he's definitely he's going to come and look for you. <laughs> <laughs> now he has a point of contact. He has a point of contact. He will come and look for you. <laughs> Those are now all the things she was saying. Imagine. Huh? That, eh, eh, then you want me to no? Me, I want to move on is, and get another man. Remember, Carl, where you tie me to that man? man. Yeah, yeah, I also feel. Not. I thought yeah. that they she do it to like cast her from that I'm saying oh, wow. goodbye yeah. to him properly, and I leave it there so it never. That's what they tell you now to make it palatable. Yeah, but ladies and gentlemen, you know what? Now do you see why you need to do your research? Yeah, don't research from one person. Now you see these two have different ones. Yeah, but no, that is. What they tell us that's now. what they yeah. tell and the original one hey. is that please and go and get the think original. about it most <laughs> cultures people pretend <laughs> not to have these things when you go inside inside no, they, ne, 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 they, they drop in some yeah. but let's be honest yeah, me yeah. i think it should be an issue of what do you believe yeah if you believe honestly that no me the pant is there i'm saying bye you can use a representation that's what she did she got a representation of a cloth that was dear to her yeah mm. and put it in and for her she said i'm just sealing this Why that is done. done i'm moving on and moving the barrel were in the third hour madam and the man cannot they, be they, put they, they still chucked her from the family yeah they still did yeah because, because, because this is my understanding i don't believe that thing that you're saying so i'm not going to put in shit. yeah but what i do believe in is what you've said of it's sealing we have closed let me just get something of mine and nah, give we have no yeah. business with that day don't put your clothes in <laughs> let's end that show <laughs> <laughs> on that I, I note let's the end that show <laughs> And as you've seen, we were coming to the end of the conversation and then we started another conversation. Yeah. Bump love is purely a conversation <laughs> starter. starter. Yes. So the dynamics to do with intermarriage, intercultural marriages are so vast, yeah. Yeah. we cannot explore all of them. Yeah. So, but do tell us in the comment section, what has your experience been like dealing in an intermarriage and would you open your mind enough to venture outside a culture or religion or race that you have been brought up in? Please let us know in the comment section. Again, we'd like to appreciate our partners, fashion episode for the look, shades of beauty for our faces, shoe puzzle for our shoes, and Zuri Luxurious, Zuri Luxurious for our hair. Yeah. Until next time, with love from Buffalo.